we see the unfolding of uh, uh, the church, the birth of the church after the coming and of the Holy Spirit as promised by Jesus uh, before his crucifixion. He had promised uh, that he would pray to Father, that he would send another comforter. And he, uh, Father, the Father certainly did that. Uh, he certainly did that, and the evidence is that um, those 120 who were uh, in the upper room, they were waiting, and uh, as the sound of, as of rush, a mighty rushing wind came, the Holy Spirit, uh, they were dwelt with the Holy Spirit. Uh, some folk thought they were drunk. They were not drunk. They were just full of the Holy Spirit. And now Peter is preaching this first sermon of the church. Uh, and we will pick up tonight. We left off last week at verse 23. We'll pick up uh, at verse 24 tonight. Um, and just to connect verses 23 and 24, verse 23 says, talking about Jesus, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and uh, by wicked hands have crucified and what? Slain. Again, we talked about uh, that on Last week, it was no accident that Jesus went to the cross. It was what? By the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. Uh, it was the will of God uh, in eternity that this would happen so that man uh, could be saved from sin. And so now we go to verse 24. Verse 24, Acts chapter 2, verse 24 says, Whom God hath raised up. Talking about Jesus, who God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Uh, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's God, he died, Jesus dies on the cross, yet whom God hath what, raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that uh, he should be holden of it. And so let's, let's go into that. And that's what God wants us to believe. Uh, he says, to, and I, before I get to the end, uh, I just want to say to the anyone again who may not have accepted Jesus as Christ, this is what God says. If you believe this, if you believe that Jesus died on the cross and that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. All right, so <clears throat> let's go to uh, dissect a little bit of, of verse 24 here. It says, whom God had raised up, having loosed the pains of death. That's how he begins. Whom God had raised up, having loosed the pains of death. Peter is preaching this sermon, and now he now, he now gets to the central point of his argument. All right, that being the truth of, concerning the resurrection. Uh, uh, any preaching, any preaching, uh, that there's, if, if it's going to be complete preaching, if it's going to be preaching in truth, there has to be, there has to be a reference, there has to be a pointing to, uh, there has to be the presentation of this central truth, that being the resurrection of, of Jesus Christ. Uh, and so Peter in his first sermon, he, he makes this clear. He gets to the point, central point of his argument, that being the, the resurrection. He first, remember, presented the shame or disgraceful, the disgraceful manner in which Jesus had been put to death. We looked at that in verse, what, 23. Uh, we looked at what the, 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 the manner in which Jesus had been put to death. But now, can't, can't leave Jesus dead in the what? In the grave. He, so Peter now moves to declaring that God raised Jesus from the dead. Beneath Peter's words, that those words, whom God hath raised up, we find all three persons of the Godhead were active in the resurrection. He says, whom God hath raised up. 
and, and, and but, but, but underneath those words, uh, we will find that all three persons of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were active in the resurrection. Turn with me, if you will, to Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. It says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. But if the spirit of him, the Holy Spirit, of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Again, we, we seek to prove that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were involved in the, the, the resurrection. Go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, verses 17 and 18. Romans chapter 10, uh, verses 17 through 18. It says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, Have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and unto their words, unto their what? end of the earth. All right? So let's go now to Romans uh, go, go to Romans chapter 6 verse 4. Romans chapter 6 and uh, verse 4. <clears throat> Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Again, we had the, the Father uh, uh, involved in the resurrection, the, the Son who uh, 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 was uh, uh, involved in the resurrection, as well as the Holy Spirit in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the raising of Jesus, the raising of Jesus from the dead, it serves, it serves, get this, it serves as what? Confirmation of the Father's acceptance of Jesus' earthly ministry, acceptance of Jesus' teachings, and it, it, the acceptance of Jesus' sacrificial death according to the Father's will. When, when, when Jesus was raised from the dead, it confirmed that the Father accepted what Jesus had done in his ministry, what Jesus had taught, and certainly the acceptance of his sacrificial death. Uh, and it was all according to the Father's will. It was by the what? We talked about this last week. It was by the determinant and foreknowledge of God that Jesus was delivered to be crucified and slain. And it was also the same God who raised Jesus from the dead. Peter, Peter then, Peter moves on to point out now the what? R the result of the resurrection. He moves on to point out the result of the resurrection. Listen, having loosed the pains of death, the resurrection put an end to the agony of death. This word, the word, the word pains, the word pains is the same as the word sorrows 
Uh, if you want to jot it down, you can find that in Matthew 24 and 8. This word pains is the same as this word sorrows found in Matthew 24 and 8. Literally, it can mean travail pangs, pangs, P-A-N-G-S, travail pangs, or birth pains, P-A-I-N-S. The resurrection is a new birth from what? The grave, such as a natural birth from the womb. It would appear when we look at Peter's preaching and his words, it would appear that what Peter does, Peter combines uh, uh, the Old Testament thought of the snares of death, all right, that the snares of death in the Old Testament, the snares of death uh, was seen as um, binding like a cord. Uh, and, and, and what Peter says as this snare of death, this Binding like a cord, um, it was what? Loosed, resulting in freedom and what? Liberation, all right? See, he, he sees death. He says the what? The pains of death, having loosed the pains of death, put an uh, end to the agony of death. Um, it put an end to the snares of death. This, this binding like a cord, all right? Binding like a cord is what? Loosed, all right? And it resulted in what? Freedom and liberation. Here's the, here's the Hebrew idea. The Hebrew idea, the Hebrew idea is one of this cord, of a cord or a band being so tightly drawn, so tightly drawn that it constricts the limbs. It constricts the limbs, and this constriction of the limbs caused extreme pain. Therefore, death, 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 death is seen, uh, as Peter's preaching here, death is seen as something which confines. Death is seen as something that, that confines it prevented escape and it produced severe sufferings. This is before the resurrection. Before the resurrection, Peter is painting a picture of death uh, 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 being this, this band, a cord, uh, tightly constricting uh, and it's painful. Uh, and so it confines, it prevents escape uh, and it produces great suffering. Go to Psalm chapter 18. Psalm chapter 18. Psalm chapter 18, and we'll look at verses 4 uh, through 5. Psalm 18, stanzas 4 through 5. It says, beginning at uh, uh, 4, Psalm uh, 18 and 4, the sorrows of death come past me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell come past me about. The snares of death prevented me. So here we have, here we have uh, in um, this, 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 this thanksgiving for deliverance by God, this, this psalm of, of, of David, uh, 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 David, David looks at death and he says, the sorrows of death compassed me. They were, it surrounded me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. He says, the sorrows of hell were all around me. The snares of death prevented me. In other words, it was holding what? It had a hold of me. It prevented any escape before the resurrection. Now go to uh, Psalm 116. Psalm 116. Psalm 116. Psalm 116 and 3. 116 and 3. 
It says, the sorrows of death come past me, and the pains of hell get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. And so as Peter uh, preaches, he sees uh, this Old Testament uh, scene. He sees uh, death uh, having what? This grip. Death having what? This, this agonizing grip. Yet he says, whom God hath raised up, Jesus, having what? Loose the pains of what? Of death. The truth that Peter presents is that the grave could not hold. The grave could not constrain Jesus, couldn't prevent his escape. And that God loosed the bounds, loosed the cords of death that held him. Peter goes on to say, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. The will of God, the will of God through the work of the Son of God could not fail. The will of God will never, what, fail. Can't stop God's will. Can't stop his will. The will of God through the work of the Son could not, what, fail. And so death could not be the end. Yeah, the cross, Jesus dying on the cross, Jesus being put uh, in the hollowed out rock, in that tomb, uh, could not be the end. Because if that was the case, it would have, uh, first of all, there would have been no salvation. Death would still reign supreme. But, but, but it would have also given credence to the lie that Jesus was not who he proclaimed to be. Those would have said, I told you so. Uh, you know, even after the resurrection, uh, 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 there were those who tried to come up with all kind of reason that he had been stolen, all these other things, that they had robbed the grave. Um, and so that would have given credence uh, if there had not been a resurrection. Go to John chapter 20. John chapter 20, <clears throat> verses 3 through 9. John chapter 20. <clears throat> Verses, John chapter 20, verses 3 through 9. Peter therefore went forth and that, and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran together. And the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying. Yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and seeth the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen clothes but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, that would be John, which came first to the sepulcher and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. And so, and so uh, there is uh, no doubt that Jesus died from, I mean, was raised from the dead. Now, why then was it impossible for death to hold Jesus? Well, 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 it would be inconsistent with the word of God, which stands what? In the complete truth, all right? It would be inconsistent for death to hold Jesus. Be inconsistent with the word. Go to John chapter 1, verse 4. John chapter 1, verse 4. <clears throat> Here it is. Talking about uh, the pre-incarnate work of Christ. Talking about Jesus. In him was life. And the life was the light of man. The opposite of death is what? A life. Be inconsistent uh, for death to hold Jesus. Because in him was life. And the light 
life was the light of what? Of man. Uh, uh, go to John chapter 2. John chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. John chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. It said it would be inconsistent with the word if death was to what? Hold Jesus. Grave couldn't hold him. Uh, John chapter 2, beginning at verse 19, it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was the temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? Go to verse 21. It says, But he spake of the temple of his body. It would be inconsistent with the word of God. It would be inconsistent with the word himself, Jesus, uh, for what? The grave to be able to have hold, uh, 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 hold, taken hold, or should hold Jesus. It was impossible that he should be what? Holding of it. Jesus came so that through him, through his death, uh, the one who had the power of death would be what? Destroyed, all right? The power of death. Uh, Jesus, what, took the sting out of death. He took the power of death, all right? Uh, he took it uh, when he what, ra was raised from the great dead. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 55 through 57. Beginning at verse 55. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, what? Jesus Christ. So again, it would be inconsistent with the word. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is love. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we, we as much as uh, 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 we want uh, our loved ones and we want to, to, to be around each other, we have nothing to fear uh, in terms of death, if you are believed. There's, there's, there's what? That, because, because even if we go to the grave, because of, uh, before Jesus comes, uh, uh, if we end up in the grave, uh, uh, because Jesus got up from the grave, uh, it couldn't hold him. It will not be able to hold us either. We have the victory, not because of us, but we have the victory through Jesus Christ, through his what? Re resurrection. It was the purpose of God that Jesus gain this victory. And so Jesus could not be defeated by being held in the grave by death. The Son of Man trusted the Father completely. The Son of Man, Jesus the Christ, uh, uh, trusted God the Father without any reservation. The Son obeyed the Father. The Son carried out the Father's will without any blemish. Therefore, because of the impeccable character of God, it was impossible for the Father what, to forsake Jesus. It was impossible for it to happen. So that's why Peter that's why Peter uh, uh, preaches, Peter now preaches, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding, what, of, of it. And, um, and so we're going to uh, stop there for, for uh, this evening. Uh, couldn't hold Jesus in the grave. And there ought to be um, some real shouting about the fact that that uh, that this truth uh, uh, gives the the believer victory. It gives the believer victory in Jesus 
Christ. And so we will end uh, tonight uh, at this point uh, and um, pray that you be with us on the next time uh, when we will continue our study uh, in this book of Acts. Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for those who uh, have listened to us. Uh,